Praise the Lord, everybody. That means we're getting ready to get started. Just got a couple announcements before we get started. A reminder, Tuesday night, 6.30 at Christo's will be the men's Christmas dinner. So all men, you come out at 6.30 at Christo's. If you'd like to be involved in the $10 gift exchange, bring a $10 gift, and you can leave with a $10 gift. If you don't want a $10 gift, don't bring a $10 gift, but you can still come. Also, this Wednesday night, uh, Stephanie and I will be showing our pictures from our Israel trip in the Wednesday night service and kind of sharing just a little bit about our trip and our experience. So if you'd like to come out and be a part of that, it will start at 7 o'clock during Bible study. Also, on December the 22nd at 9.30, we're going to be going Christmas caroling to the shut-ins. We're going to leave the church at 9.30, and we'll be back in time for choir practice at 1 o'clock. So... Please remember that. Everybody's invited to go. If you'd like to go, please sign up on the bulletin board. That way we have an idea on how many people will be going. The shut-ins always appreciate us coming by and singing to them. And it's a blessing to them, also a blessing to us. So if you've never gone, we invite you to go with us. We have a great time, and it's a great blessing. We appreciate Pastor Hill, his wife, to be, being with us tonight. Looking forward to the Word of God. Amen. Most of all, the Bible says, where two or three would come together in His name, He'd be in the midst. So the Lord Jesus Christ is with us tonight. Let's stand, let's invite His presence into this service. Father, we love You and we thank You, Lord, for another time, another opportunity. Lord, just to worship You. Father, I pray tonight, God, for Your freedom and Your liberty in this place. God, fill this room with Your presence, God. Walk up and down the aisles. God, heal those, God, that are sick tonight. God, raise up those that are downtrodden. Father, I pray Your will will be accomplished in this building. Father, I pray it all in the name of Jesus. Everybody shout amen tonight. Amen. amen. Let's worship the Lord as Brother Nate comes to lead us to worship. Amen. Amen, church. We heard uh, the good word this morning as that was preached. We can't wait for the word, good word that's going to be preached tonight. Remember, let's just forget about ourselves and lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. The devil would like nothing better than to get our songs mixed up and our praise mixed up and all those kinds of things, but we're, he's not going to have his way. Amen. We're here to celebrate the Lord. So let's sing this old, old goodie. I shall wear a robe and crown. What's he there for? You know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away. If you're fighting, striving for the right, you shall wear a robe and I shall wear a crown. Oh, when the trumpet sounds, oh, I shall wear a crown. Just as soon as that plea strike, Zion, lay down the heavy burden, put on the robe in glory, shout and tell God's story, you shall wear a robe and I, I shall wear a crown, oh when the trumpet sounds, oh I shall wear a crown, just as Soon as my feet strike, dying, lay down my heavy burden, put on my robe in glory, gonna shout and tell the glad story, you shall wear a robe and crown. Be not like the foolish virgin man, for he is coming and you know not when. Have your lamps all trimmed and burning bright. You shall wear a robe and crown. Oh, I shall wear a crown. Oh, when the trumpet sounds, oh, I shall wear a crown. Just as to my feet strike, dying, lay down the heavy burden, put on my robe in glory. Just tell me that story. You shall wear a robe and I shall wear a crown Oh, when the trumpet sounds Oh, I shall wear a crown 
Just as to as my speed strike, dying, gonna lay down my heavy burden, put on my robe in glory, gonna shout and tell the glad story, we shall wear a robe and crown. Lead me, Jesus, lead me all the way, lead me, Jesus, lest I go astray, lead me in the straight and narrow way. You shall wear a robe and crown. Oh, I shall wear a crown. Oh, when the trumpet sounds. Oh, I shall wear a crown. Just as two lambs be strike, dying, lay down the heavy burden. Put on my robe in glory. Shout and tell the glad story. We shall fight the king just tell him all about our struggles. Put on the robe in glory. Shout and tell the glad story. We shall wear a robe in oh, I shall wear a crown. Oh, when the trumpet sounds. Sit down beside King Jesus, telling how I made it over. Gonna put on the robe in glory, shout and tell the glad story. We shall wear a robe and crown. Oh, I'm gonna wear. I shall wear a crown. Oh, when the trumpet sounds, oh, I shall wear a crown. Let's do that speech strike dying. Lay down my heavy burden, put on my robe in glory, shout the glad, glad story, gonna sit down beside King Jesus, telling all about my good old earth, put on my robe in glory, gonna shout and tell them that story, we shall wear a robe in crown. Put your hands together, heavy burden, put on my robe in glory, shout and tell the glad story, get out my spirit robe in crown, I shall wear a crown, oh when the trumpet sounds, oh I shall wear a crown, soon as the feet strike dying, laid out my heavy burden, Put on my robe in glory, shout to tell we the glad story, oh, we shall wear a robe and crown, oh, we shall wear a robe and crown, we shall wear a robe, we shall wear a robe. you looking forward to that day, church? Amen, amen. I love how God works. That's not quite how Dan and I practice, but God knew what to do, and he took over. And I believe he blessed us, amen. amen. This next song is titled, What More Can Jesus Do? You know, he, he paid the price. He did it all. But what more can Jesus do? Let's sing this song tonight, church. Some of you may not know it. It's pretty easy to know. The words will be up on the screen. Tell me what more can Jesus do? Tell me what more can Jesus do? He has laid the foundation and he opened up the way. Tell me what more can Jesus do? Tell me what more can Jesus do? What more can Jesus do? He has laid the foundation and he opened up the way. What more can Jesus do? 
can Jesus do? He healed the sick and he raised the dead. He healed the sick and raised the dead. He has laid the foundation and he opened up the way. What more can Jesus do? Tell me what more can Jesus do? Tell me what more can Jesus do? He has laid the foundation and he opened up the way. Tell me what more can Jesus do? He died for you on Calvary. He shed his blood so you could be free. He has laid the foundation and he opened up the way. What more can Jesus do? Tell me what more can Jesus do? Tell me what more can Jesus do? He has laid the foundation and he opened up the way. Tell me what more can Jesus do? He died for you. He died for you on Calvary. He shed his blood. He shed his blood so you could be free. He has laid the foundation and he opened up the way. What more? What more can Jesus do? Tell me what more? What more can Jesus do? Tell me what more? What more can Jesus do? Oh, he has laid the foundation and he opened up the way. Tell me what more? What more? Can one more time, church? Tell me what more? What more can Jesus do? Tell me what more? What more can Jesus do? He has laid the foundation and he opened up the way. What more can Jesus do? He has laid the foundation and he opened up the way. What more? What more can Jesus do? That's just one of the songs we used to sing growing up in church. Amen. What more can Jesus do? Before either Brother Hill or Pastor comes for prayer requests, let's sing this song. What a day that will be. My, my, my. With my Jesus, I shall see. for me what a 
church with a need, would you just slip up your hands, saying, I need God to do something for me. Help me pray tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for being here in our midst. God, you said where two or three would come together in your name, you'd be here. God, we know you're, we know you're here tonight amongst your people. Father, you saw the hands. And God, I pray right now, God, that you would reach your hand down, touch every hand, God, that was raised. God, you know what they need before they ask. But God, they ask tonight for your help. They realize, God, they can't do it by themselves. They recognize, God, they need you tonight. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would touch every need here. God, those that are sick tonight. God, those that are fighting cancer. God, I pray you give them victory tonight over cancer. God, those that are discouraged. God, those that may be depressed tonight. I pray, God, that you speak a word of encouragement. God, lift them up above the shadows and let them know, God, you're right with them. Father, I pray for those that couldn't come tonight, God, due to sickness. God, that you would touch them right where they're at. Father, I pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Calling it done. Hallelujah. He is passing by this moment. Your needs to supply. Reach 
tonight if you can be. We're going to ask the ushers to come tonight to receive the evening offering. Now tonight this offering will go to Pastor Hill. So if you have to give tonight, you give as unto the Lord. Now if you have tithe, put it in an envelope and we'll separate the tithes. But all the rest of the offering will go to Pastor Hill tonight. So please give as unto the Lord. They're planning a trip to Israel sometime soon. So let's be a blessing to them. Amen. Amen. Help them get started. Amen. Amen. So let's be a blessing tonight. Let's bow our heads. Father, we love you and thank you. God, for this ministry, God, you brought our way. We thank you for Pastor Hill and his wife that's here with us. Father, I pray, God, as we reach into our wallets, our checkbooks, God, that we would listen to your voice. God, that you, as you speak to us, help us to be obedient. And Father, we know tonight if we're obedient to you, you'll be faithful to us. And I pray your blessing upon each and every one, those that may have to give and those that may not. Father, I pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 If you were here this morning, you heard Pastor preaching on John 17, verse 15. And there's a part in that verse that says that he will protect us from evil. This is another song that we sang growing up. And it's, O oh Lord, I'm in your care. O oh Lord, I'm in your care. Wrap your loving arms around me so that evil cannot harm me. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Wrap your loving arms around me so that evil cannot harm me. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Wrap your loving arms around me so that evil cannot harm me. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. I thank you, Lord, that I'm in your care. I thank you, Lord, that I'm in your care. You've wrapped your loving arms around me so that evil cannot harm me. Oh Lord, 
I'm in your care. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Wrap your loving arms around me so that evil cannot harm me. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Wrap your loving arms around me so that evil cannot harm me. Oh Lord, I'm in your care. Amen. You've got a hand clap tonight, church. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. And amen. Brother Jason Wofford has a special that he wants to bring forth, so pray that God uses him to bless us. Amen. The Word 
word has a name and it's Jesus redemption has a name and it's Jesus Amen Amen blessing and honor and glory and power Amen 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 blessing and honor and glory and power Amen. can we all stand to our feet and sing this chorus Amen Amen Blessing and honor and glory and power Amen 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 Blessing and honor and glory power amen 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 oh we give you praise lord all blessing and honor and glory and power amen Pastor Hill, if he'll come at this time, let's give him and the Lord a hand clap. He's going to sing for us. He's going to preach. Yeah, amen. Okay. I'm going to get my guitar for me. All right. I think we ought to give these 
worship leaders, the choir, and all that. It's a good hand tonight. A great, a good song. A brother sang. Amen. Thank you, brother Chris. Pastor Chris. It's an honor tonight to be here, and we appreciate the good pastors here, brother Chris and Sister Stephanie Black. Doing a fine job, aren't they? Amen. We have some friends with us tonight from Lafayette, Brother Mark and and uh, Suzanne. I got it right, right? <laughs> Amen. So, go to ask them to stand. They would. Amen. And of course, I've got my wonderful wife with me tonight, Sister Marilyn, and she's going to stand and walk up here with me. Okay. <laughs> Amen. All righty. And she's going to give us a little testimony here. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to tell a little story. And I, this is not a Bible. This is a hymnal. But you all know what hymnals are. A lot of churches don't know what hymnals are. So I always bring it when I want to tell this story. In this particular hymnal, there are around 500 hymns. And each one of those hymns has a story behind it, a reason it was written, somebody's heart was touched, some situation in life happened. And the one we're going to talk about, or I'm going to tell you about, is kind of an odd story, I think, because it actually comes from India, which we never think about our hymns coming from India. But it, probably around 200 years ago, some missionaries were called to India, to the northern part of India, and at that time, it was a very uh, wild and pagan area. In fact, the place they were called to actually were considered headhunters, which is odd, too, for India. And in this village, when the missionaries got there, there was a man and his family with two sons, a wife, and the man, and they were converted to Christianity, and they became quite... Um, a burden to the rest of the community. The, uh, the rest of the community didn't like the fact that they had converted to Christianity. And so they went to their whatever kind of home they lived in and dragged them to the middle of the city and the chief of that tribe demanded that this man renounce Christianity. And when he refused, the chief threatened him and told him that he was going to um, take his children's life, the two sons. And this is what the Christian man replied. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The chief then ordered his archers to destroy the two sons and their lives were taken. And again, the chief said to the man, if you don't renounce this time, we're going to destroy your wife. And his reply to that request was, Don't go with me, still I will follow. Don't go with me, still I will follow. Don't go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. And the chief had then continued to do what he had said he would do, and he took the man's wife. And when the man realized that he really didn't have anything left in this world and the chief required of his life, he said, if you don't renounce, we're going to destroy you also. And the man replied with, The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. And oh, I think most of you know that. Okay, go ahead. 
And well, I want to finish the story. Oh yeah. Because it I'm sorry. it ha it was a it's a sad story, but it does have a wonderful ending. The man's life was taken, but because of that, the chief was so convicted. Over time, he converted to Christianity, and that area now is now known as Garo Christians. That's a folk song that they sing, and that area in India is almost exclusively Christian because of that. So it's interesting. It's actually a folk song from India. Yeah, stay with me. Oh. Let's stand. We're going to sing it together, all right? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. So not go with me. Still I will follow. So none go with me. Still I will follow. So none go with me. Still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. Well, Marilyn, I thought you were going to help me on another one, huh? You need help? I always need help. What's it going to be? Well, it's, I don't know. But it, <laughs> it's key of G, and, and it's mostly all G. Mostly all. Okay? Good old Pentecostal song. It's huh? a Pentecostal. Okay, it definitely is. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh. <laughs> now Satan had me looking at this world so wide Couldn't find nothing but a desert so dry Then sweet Jesus spoke to me He said I have everything you need. Now I'm walking in a highway that leads home. I'm eating from a table that ever stays full. And I'm drinking from a fountain that never runs dry. And I'm going to a country where we'll never more die. Now Jesus paid a price for me. He gave his life to set me free. And he shed his blood to cover my sin. And he gave me life that has no end. Now I'm walking in a high Home. I'm eating from a table that ever stays full. And I'm drinking from a fountain that never runs dry. And I'm going to a country where we'll never more die. Now, sweet, sweet Jesus, hold my hand. Just lead me on to the promised land And by the eye of faith I see I'm so glad the beautiful heaven is waiting for me Oh, I'm walking in a highway that leads home I'm eating from a table that ever stays full. And I'm drinking from a fountain that never runs dry. And I'm going to a country where we'll never more die. Yes, I'm going to a country where we'll never more die. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all right. Amen.
Amen. All righty. Praise God. How many is planning on going? Amen. How many has already got started? How many feel like you're getting close to it? <laughs> Amen. Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't quite hear that. <laughs> I got me some new, some new ears, and. Uh, you know, a few years ago, uh, when we were in the older building, I, I, uh, I got so I couldn't hear people's prayer requests and their testimonies. I could hear them talking, but I couldn't tell what they were saying. So I thought, well, I'm going to get me a, a set of hearing aids. So I went and I figured out uh, get the best I could buy. And I spent $5,000. Man, that's a lot of money for me to spend. And I, I've got, I got those things, and I went to church, and I couldn't even hear my guitar. I could feel the vibration. I couldn't hear nothing in the church. Outside, I could hear real good, but not in the church. They weren't worth 50 cents. <laughs> Amen. And so, I, for years, I just thought, well, I, I don't want to waste any more money on hearing aids. Amen. And uh, I just couldn't seem to get my healing for my ears, you know. All those things. So anyway, not long ago, I decided I'd try it again, and I found a pair that I can hear myself and I can hear you. Amen. 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 And I wouldn't take five thousand dollars for them, although I had to pay more. <laughs> I wouldn't take. No, I wouldn't take anything for them that I know of, especially if I had to do without. Amen. It's an honor to be here tonight, and I appreciate the invitation to come, and it always feels good, you know, to come here and stand behind this podium, and and uh, which I've done a few times in my life, and and uh, preach to you folks, and it's always so good and kind to me and my family, and I uh, always appreciated that uh, from the depths of my heart. And we're so grateful tonight to know that one of the, uh, we've got one of the finest young men that grew up, that grew up in this church pastoring uh, you tonight or today. So we're honored uh, uh, to know that Brother Chris and Sister Tiffany are doing such a fine job. Amen. We love them. Appreciate them. Amen. Uh, turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews tonight and we're going to read a, a few scripture and and uh, try to preach to you a little bit tonight and uh, talk to you a little bit about the goodness of God, how good God is. Man, I hear that you had a wonderful time this morning in service. The pastor just preached, you know, so great. <clears throat> you know, fellow, a fellow told me one time, he said uh, he got up to preach on Sunday morning and he had studied and put it all together good and prayed and all that and he got up and preached and he just couldn't, uh, it just didn't seem to go anywhere, and uh, nobody really seemed to respond to it, and all that. So he got—he was pretty depressed when he got done. And so on the way home, he told his wife. He said, "That must have been the sorriest sermon I ever preached." He said, "It did, it just had no effect whatsoever." And uh, he said, "That was a bad. It was just a bad sermon." And she put her arm around him, patted him on the shoulder, and said. Well, I got a lot of good points out of that sermon. That kind of perked him up a little bit, you know. So he went home and he prayed and and uh, and uh, sought God and and uh, so he went back to church that night and he got up and preached. Boy, he just preached like the house was on fire, and he just really, really got with it, you know. So on the way home, he he said, "You know, I really had a great sermon tonight. It was really great." And, she patted him on the shoulder again. She said, now come, my dear, off of your perch. You know, if you, have, if you was a better preacher, you'd have a bigger church. <laughs> Thank God for wives. They know how to keep us balanced. <laughs> Amen. All right. 
chapter 12 in the book of Hebrews 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider, did you ever consider something? For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Now, Father, we thank you this evening for the privilege, Lord, to stand behind this sacred desk, and, Lord, to declare your word. Thank you, God, for all who gathered with us. I pray, Lord, tonight that you'll bring to my mind the things I should say. I need the anointing of the Holy Ghost to bring to my mind and also to deliver. I pray, God, that your word will come forth, Lord, and minister to the hearts and lives of people. Help me, Lord, to lift up Jesus in this place tonight. And I'll thank you, God, for all that you do in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. The thought I want to leave with you tonight, if you hang on to this thought, it might help make a little sense of what I'm preaching about tonight. I've decided to follow Jesus. I've decided to follow Jesus. I'm glad I decided a long time ago, amen, to follow Jesus. I believe it was 1960 I decided to follow Jesus. Somebody said, do you, how could you forget that birthday? Well, when you get my age, you find out that uh, you knew a lot of things one time and could remember a lot of things at one time. <laughs> Amen. But I, I'm glad I decided to follow Jesus. Amen. And it's been a wonderful trip. People, travel, people follow a lot of things today. Man. But I thought of the wise men, you know. They followed the star. How many know Jesus is the star? <laughs> Amen. Wise men followed the star. Amen. So, anybody that... Anybody that follows Jesus is a wise person. Amen. So, I want to talk a little bit about that tonight. There are several little points in the passage that I read here this evening that I want to try to share with you. I have decided that I'm going to follow Jesus. You know, there's a lot of different opinions about, uh, about uh, the book of Hebrews from a lot of Bible scholars. There's a lot of different people who wonder who wrote the book of Hebrews, but I, I kind of believe that it was Apostle Paul that wrote the book of Hebrews. It's kind of like uh, his uh, writings as he wrote to the, the different churches, you know. But anyway, whosoever wrote the, the book of Hebrews, man, seemed to have a pastor's heart. When you read the book of Hebrews, it just seems, at least to me, uh, that he had a pastor's heart. You know, anybody, there's a lot of good preachers in the world, but everybody's not called to be a pastor. Amen. And when you've got a good pastor, best thing to do is hang on to him as long as you can. Amen. Uh, because good pastors sometimes are hard to find. Hallelujah. So we're blessed to have a good pastor here. So hang on. Hang on to him tight, all right? Amen. So we, we, we see this as we read in the book of Hebrews. Uh, it seems as if he had a pastor's heart. Because as you read it, you find out that he's seemingly trying to cheer them on, you know, and, and telling them to keep to faith and keep trusting in Jesus and keep following after the Lord and, and to never give up. Hallelujah. And thus the ideal is today that we would hang in there and never, never give up. Hallelujah. Also reminding them that they had a heaven, they've got a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Hallelujah. So we understand today that we all have a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen. I'm glad that Jesus made the way. I kind of uh, listened to that song tonight and I got to thinking, yes, what else could Jesus do? Amen. He made the way. Hallelujah. Where there seemed to be no way. 
And of course, Apostle Paul said, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us. Amen. The Scripture says we have a great cloud of witnesses. In other words, there's a great crowd, there's a, uh, there's a great a crowd of people, amen, that are witnessing and watching our lives. Amen. And somebody said, well, uh, who, are, wh- who are these, uh, what is this great witnesses, amen, they're people. Amen. When he talks about a great cloud, when you think of a cloud, you think of something up, do you not? Amen. And so we wonder uh, about who these people are, amen, that are uh, hoping and praying, amen, from the portals of heaven that we make it. Hallelujah. They're cheering us on. They're watching our lives, amen, and things of this nature. Hallelujah. And so the Bible doesn't say who these, who these witnesses are, man, but I'd like to believe that they are the, the patriarchs of old, of the Old Testament. And maybe the martyrs of the, uh, of the disciples and, and especially our loved ones who have gone on before us. Amen. Uh, that they're cheering us on and, and encouraging us. Uh, they're, they're probably saying it's worth it all. Just keep on keeping on. Amen. And don't give up. Set your face like a flint. Amen. And keep on keeping on for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Apostle Paul says, We must lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. Amen. Because we don't, you know, we don't uh, walk or run very well with weights hanging on us. Amen. And so Paul is telling us to lay aside every weight and every and sin that so easily beset us. Amen. Uh, so that we can run this race. Hallelujah. And that, that we can make it to the end. Hallelujah. So we understand that when we're weighted down with the cares of this life, that we don't do very well spiritually. Amen. And so some of the weights, uh, uh, no doubt, amen, uh, uh, probably is one of them would be weary. You know, some people will say, well, I'm, I'm worried sick. Well, be careful because if you keep worrying, you're going to get sick. Because the Bible said life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so we have to be careful what we say. Amen. And so I encourage people never use the word worried. If it's bad enough, you know, just say, well, I'm concerned. I'm very concerned. I don't like the word worry myself, but it's really a word. But people carry that along. Amen. And some people say, well, I'm, I'm worried to death. Well, keep on worrying. You're going to die. It might get there quicker than you think. Amen. Now, that's another way. Hallelujah. Discouragement. You know, a lot of times, uh, just about every time you know, get to talking to people, you'll find out they've got problems. And I don't know about you, but I don't care a whole lot about being around people, you know, that uh, it's always down in the mouth and, and got, uh, you know, they're always negative and, and this is bad and that's bad and loom and gloom and, you know, and all these terrible things. And, and it seems like that's all they live for, amen, is, is discouragement. You know what discouragement does? He'll take the joy out of your soul. He'll take the peace out of your mind. Amen. You'll find out that you're not very good company after a while. You'll find out that people will start shunning you after a while because they don't want to hear all that kind of stuff. Amen. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost and you've got the power of God in you, I want you to know, friend, you've got a life to give. Amen. So speak positive. Speak of good things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you it's a lie, but I'm telling you, friend, when you've got Jesus, you've got something worth talking about. Hallelujah. Another way to this unforgiveness. I meet Christians every now and then, that they're holding grudges. Somebody hurt them. So, you know, they may have got hurt in church sometime. Or maybe their companion hurt them. Or maybe somebody in the family has hurt them. And maybe, uh, you know, after a while, folks, 
uh, people get where they won't even talk to each other. I've, I've met families where they won't even talk to each other. Hey Amen. They've been hurt, and and and, and so they they get uh, unforgiveness in their spirit. And, and and I want you to know something about that. Hey Amen. That it's called the 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 root of bitterness. After a while, you'll get bitter. Hey Amen. If you can't have the spirit of forgiveness, and the Bible teaches us, unless we forgive them that trespass against us, neither will our heavenly Father forgive us. And so. You know who hurts the worst? If you don't have a forgiving spirit, amen, after a while, you'll find out your prayers are not going to be answered. You're going to find out after a while, amen, that you're not doing very well spiritually. And so God wants us to be filled with the love of God, amen, and have a forgiving spirit, hallelujah. And the person that hurts you, the person maybe that done you wrong, amen, uh, they probably forgot about it and they're just out there having a good time. And here you are moaning and groaning and complaining, amen. Amen. And you're hurting, and it's getting worse all the time. And the devil will magnify that thing. But I'm telling you tonight, folks, we need to have a heart in us that will say, Amen. Regardless of what happened, I have a spirit of forgiveness. Amen. Hallelujah. The old saying is, Forgive and forget. Well, you may never forget, it may pop up every now and then, but you know what? You can you can just break you can break that thing off and put it under your foot and crush it and say in the name of Jesus I have forgiven that person I've got love in my heart for them I'm praying for them and besides that I'm not going to keep on going over and over in this thing I'm going to go on and live my life and with victory in my soul Hallelujah How many knows that's a heavy weight to carry Temptation is another one. We're all tempted from time to time. It's not a sin to be tempted. Amen? But if you let temptation lead you into sin, then it's a sin. Amen? But the Bible tells us it's a common thing to be tempted. But in every temptation, God makes a way to escape. Oh, listen, that's a heavy weight to carry around when you're tempted. But you know what? If you'll stop when you're tempted, if you'll stop, well, one of the things I practice is this. Amen. When I'm tempted, uh, I'll stop and, and, and I'll count to three, I'll, but I count slow. One, two, three. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want you to know, friend, that old spirit will leave. I said that spirit will leave. Hallelujah. If you'll just call upon the name of the Lord God, hallelujah, that temptation will will get in the background. And listen, once you get victory over some temptations in your life and, and, the, and the devil knows you've got victory over it, amen, I want you to know he won't bother you with that thing again. I found that out. Things that used to tempt me, I got victory over and after a while the devil decided, well, ain't no use to waste my time on him on that subject. <laughs> but don't, don't, he don't give up. You know, he always brings up another one. Amen? Something else. Another way to carry around is fear. Man, the Bible says fear, has got, it's got torment. Every now and then fear tries to grab us. And fear is a terrible thing to have. You know, some folks, they're afraid to get on an airplane. Some folks are afraid to get in an automobile. Some folks are afraid to get on an elevator. Amen? I used to be afraid after dark, go out after dark when I was a little boy. They told me that the booger man would get me out there in the dark. And I believed it. And so I was afraid to go out after dark by myself. But if my biggest brother would go out with me, I wasn't afraid of nothing. Because he was mean as a junkyard dog. Amen. And all the meanness I learned, I learned it from him. He was my mentor growing up. Amen. And so I wasn't afraid as long as I was with my brother. I could get, go anywhere in the dark. But I am going to go out after dark by myself. Man, so anyway, I found out after I got saved that Jesus took that fear completely away from me. 
because the Bible teaches me that God can see just as good in the dark as He can in the daylight. Not only that, but He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way, even unto the end. He'll go with me after dark. He'll go with me after in the daylight. Hallelujah. He's always there. He's not only my Savior, but He's my big brother. Hallelujah. He redeemed me from sin. Hallelujah. And I want you to know, friend, tonight, He will never leave you and never forsake you. You don't have to live in fear. Years ago, after, when I first started pastoring, uh, some man got mad at me at church and went home and got his knife. He's going to kill me. He's going he to work me over. He came and stood in the back of the church and, and uh, with a hand in his pocket. I didn't tell nobody, so I just dismissed everybody after church, you know, and stayed me and my family, and I locked up the door, and he followed me to my car. He had his knife out, and he was threatening me and cussing and doing all kinds of things, and I could feel the wind of that blade back of my neck. Hey man, he kept threatening me. I put my family in front of me. I got to the car, hey amen, and let my family in, and he still never did touch me. Hey amen, I, I, I want you to know God knows how to take care of you. And God knows how to protect you. Hallelujah. But the Bible teaches me, Man, it says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. God has given that uh, word out. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You know what? It was only a couple months later, amen, uh, that the young man, he came by and apologized. I was gone, but he, he left an apology with my wife and all of that. But, you know, it wasn't too long after that till he fell through the, uh, the roof of the inland steel mill there in Gary, Indiana, and he, and he died. Amen. But you know what? Somebody said, well, uh, vengeance belongeth to God. Yes, it does. And I'm not, you know, I don't know how it all happened, but one thing I know for sure, friend, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Hallelujah. You don't have to fear. And, I, and when I was going to the car, I could feel that thing going back and forth behind my neck, and, and I could hear, hear his words of cursing and threatening. Hey Amen. I was praying, and I said, God, if it's my time to go, I'm ready to go. If it's the way you want me to go, that's all right, God. I'm not afraid. I'm trusting you. You're with me. And you know what? He never did touch me. God's good. I said, God's good. Amen. There's a lot of things. Anything that causes us to grow weary in well-doing becomes a weight. Anything. But the Bible teaches us in 1 Peter verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 7, says, Casting all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. So I'm encouraging you tonight, keep on keeping on for Jesus. And amen. Uh, don't, get, don't give up. Don't grow weary. Trust in Him. He will never leave you. He'll be there with you all the way, even unto the end. Amen. Of your journey. Then the Scripture goes on to say, not only the weight that we should lay aside that so easily besets us, but let's lay aside the sin that so easily beset us. <clears throat> you say, does Christians sin? I know a lot of them think they don't. I've met a few people who thought they were perfect. But there's only been one perfect person. His name was Jesus. Amen? Only one. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us if we sin, talking to the church, talking to us Christians, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. And if we'll confess our sins to Him, He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Can you say amen? That's the kind of God that we serve. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, everybody has their way of doing things. But when I get down to pray, that's part of my prayer. God, if I have failed you today or sinned in any way, please forgive me. Amen. I know your mercies are new every day. Now, Lord, I pray that you'll have mercy upon my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Tig Koppel, a news commentator, 
few years ago, I was watching him. He was, he was interviewing uh, Billy Graham. And um, he, was, he said, you know, Billy, you, you're probably the greatest evangelist that ever come along in this world. You've been all over the world, and thousands and thousands of people got saved under your ministry and all of that. And then went on and says, uh, Billy, do you, uh, do you, are you afraid to, uh, to die? He said, no, I'm not afraid to die. He said, are you afraid to stand before the judgment seat of Christ? He said, yes, I am. And Ted Koppel said unto him, he said, uh, Billy, you've been sinning. He said, it's not what I've done. He said, it's the thing I'm afraid of is the thing I didn't do. I want you to know, sin, uh, sometimes we procrastinate along the way. Amen. Sometimes we disobey the Word of God. Sometimes we, di uh, we fail to take the leading of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, when the Lord is speaking to us or to go witness to somebody or to tell them about the goodness of God. Or, or, or you know, it's so easy sometimes, amen, to fail to do what we know to do. And the Bible said, if we know to do right and do it not, it's a sin to us. So we lay all those sins aside that so easily besets us along the way. What kind of sins? Secret sins. You know, nothing's hid from God, but we can hide it from one another. But not God knows how to pull the cover off of us too, don't it? In fact, the Bible tells us about that. The cover gets too short sometimes. Secret sins. Unconfessed sins. Unconfessed sin. The Bible tells us that for sin, that we're to confess our sin. Amen? How many knows those are heavy weights? They easily beset us along the way. Willful sins. It's when we know to do good and do it not. Willful sins. Things we do that no longer bothers our conscience. And if you keep on doing it, after a while your conscience becomes seared as a, as a hot iron. And when your conscience is seared, amen, it no longer bothers you when you sin. How many knows we're living in a sinful world? Amen. How many knows, amen, there's a lot of uh, 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 so-called or confessed people who say they're Christians, amen, and they're still living in sin. And the devil's convinced them that it's all right. I believe the pulpit's a good place to preach against sin. Amen? I believe the pulpit's a good place to tell people what the Bible talks about. Amen? And how to get out of the, the problem of sin. Amen. Of the weights and sins that so, be easy, so easily beset us along the way. Hallelujah. Amen. These weights and sins, Paul said, they're so easily, they so easily beset us. They become competitors and, and hinderers to defeat us on our journey. Amen. Those things will hinder us Keep trying to uh, trying to keep us from winning our race. Hallelujah! Trying to sidetrack us, trying to slow us down. Those things really can do that. So that's why Paul said we need to lay them aside, get rid of them. Then the Scripture goes on and said, "Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let's run this race with patience, man." I don't think he's talking about a foot, way, a foot race, man, because I used to be able to run, but I can't run very good anymore. I can run a little bit. I told my wife the other day, I said, I've got to run to the bathroom. She said, I'm going to see that. <laughs> she wasn't talking about the bathroom. She wanted to see me run. <laughs> Amen? And so we understand that he's not talking about a foot race. Hallelujah. But he's talking about us getting on the straight and narrow way and try to make it to heaven. Hallelujah. So, he said, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You see, our Heavenly Father is the one that has set your race and my race. Amen? 
He's the one that done it. The race that is set before us. It wasn't my mother. It wasn't my daddy. It wasn't my brother. It wasn't my sister. Amen? It wasn't my pastor. It was my heavenly Father that set my race. Amen? He's the one that gave me my space in time. He's the one, man, that provided the way and then showed me the way. And He's the one that's going to help me all the way. Hallelujah. He's the one that set my race. And then the Bible tells us, run this race with patience. Amen. He said, let us run it. Patience means to be steadfast <clears throat> despite the opposition. Be steadfast. In other words, the journey you've started, be steadfast. Don't be wishy-washy. Amen. Don't run here and run there. Find you a good church, a good pastor, and let God plant you there. You know, a tree cannot bear fruit if you don't plant it, it'll die. And when you find a good pastor, you're in good saw ground. You're in good, good ground, good soil. And when the Holy Ghost comes along, it's good fertilized. When the Holy Ghost comes along, it's also a good rain shower. And when the Holy Ghost comes along, it's a good sunshine. And after a while, you'll find out that you're taking roots. And after a while, you'll find out that you're growing in the Lord. After a while, you'll find out that you're beginning to bear some fruit. Hallelujah. I said you begin to bear some fruit. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, be steadfast and unmovable. Hallelujah. Set your face like a flint and say, I'm going to go to heaven. I've got my mind made up. Amen. I've started this race and I'm not going to quit. Uh, hallelujah. I'm going to keep on keeping on regardless of what happens. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I know you probably heard me preach these, this before, and I've, I, I've preached most of my preaching time and, uh, since I've been a preacher. Amen. Is, you know, when you've got a good pastor, hang on to him. But we also know pastors come and go. How many knows that? But see, if you're rooted and grounded in a good church, it, amen, at your home. That's your home. And so don't just, just because, you know, you change pastors, you know, hang in there because that, that's just your home. Amen. God knows your need and God eventually will work it out where you'll, you'll be blessed. How many believes that? Amen. And, and so I said, well, it's kind of like this. If you put all your faith in a man, if a man fails, you'll fall with him. Preachers fail. Preachers backslide. Amen? And so, don't put your faith in a preacher. Put it in God. But put confidence in your pastor. Put confidence in your pastor. And pray for your pastors. Tell them how much you appreciate them. Bless them along the way. Encourage them along the way. Hallelujah. God will bless you for it. Amen. Hallelujah. You might be asking, who cares if I run the race or not? Who cares? You know, a lot of people got that attitude. Amen. People can say, well, I ain't hurting nobody but me. That's not true. Everybody has an effect on somebody. Everybody has influence over somebody. And so, who cares whether I run this race or not? There's a lot of people that care. God cares. And number one, you should care. I said you should care whether or not you run this race or not. You should care whether you make heaven or not. You should care whether or not you miss hell. Amen? Everybody needs to care. We know, we know today that God cares and He wants us to make it. He provided the way. He gave His only begotten Son. Jesus died for us. He shed His blood for us. He showed us the way. Hallelujah. And so He cares, hallelujah, whether or not we make it.
first of all, you should care. Secondly, there's many others who care. There's people watching your life and my life. Amen. They're counting on us to finish the race. My oldest brother, I told you how ornery he was. I had to preach his funeral. I was part of, part of the preaching of his funeral. And I, and I told the crowd and the family, I said, all the meanness I ever learned, I learned it from him. Amen. But he did get saved. But I was there, I was visiting with him one time, and and uh, he handed me his billfold, and he said, I, I want you to take out a, some money for me. I need some, I need some money. And I opened it up, and I, I seen a whole bunch of $100 bills. And I thought, ooh, I know my brother had that kind of money. And I said, I was a little discouraged, you know. One of those days when I was a little discouraged, I was carrying a weight. And I said, you know, maybe I ought to quit preaching and come down here in the hills of Kentucky and work in the coal mines like my brothers. I, I said, uh, all of you got money and all of you got homes and most of you got new cars and trucks. And I said, I have to live in the parsonage and the old beater I drive around. And uh, it was back in those days, you know. And, uh, and uh, he looked at me. He was a sinner man. He said... Oh no! Don't you dare! Don't you quit? He said, "You got something better than we've got." You've been watching my life. I said, "You've been watching my life." There's people watching your life. Come on now! I said, "People are watching your life." Amen. Amen. Well, a few years passed, and one day I got a phone call, and he said, "Leroy, do you think you could baptize me?" I said, I sure could. You want me? I said, you want me to come down in Kentucky and baptize you? And he said, no, I'm coming up there. I baptized him over in the old church. Amen. That was quite an honor. And then every time I'd talk to him, he'd say, pray for my wife, Barb, but she'll get saved. She never was raised to go to church or anything. Good woman, but good won't get you to heaven. So I think about five years went by. She went to church with him all the time. Never got saved. He'd say, pray for Barb. She'll get saved. He said, I was sitting down on my little work stool down in my shed. And he said, I felt a, a, sho I felt a hand on my shoulder. And, and I looked around. My wife was crying. She said, do you think Leroy would baptize me? You want me to come down there and back? No, we're coming up there. It's quite an honor. You see, my brother was watching my life. Yeah. Came to church one time. He never really went to church much. Come to church drunk. And the usher told his kid, you know, the kids kept running the bathroom. You know, kids have never been to church. They don't know how to act in church. And so, usher had the kids sit down. After church, my brother said to me, he said, if I ever come here again, and they, they do that to my kids, he said, I'll whip them right here in this church. I said, no, you won't. He said, yeah, I will. I said, nope, you'll whoop me first. Well, if that's the way it is, I won't be back tomorrow. I said, suit yourself. Guess what, folks? He's still watching my life. I said he was still watching my life. You see, if I'd have gave in to him, he may have lost confidence. Can't let things like that beset you along the way. Amen? I don't care if it's your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad. Amen? Don't give up to sin. I said don't compromise your salvation for nobody. Hallelujah. Because in the long run, it's going to work out to your benefit. You will be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't give up. Don't give in. Don't quit. Don't backslide. Because if you backslide, I don't know why I'm preaching. I, I feel like I'm preaching to somebody here tonight. If you backslide, you may never get back everything that you lost. 
Come on. I said, you may never get back what you lost. You say, I lose it? Yeah. You backslide, I guarantee you're going to lose out. Come on. The way of a transgressor is hard, the Bible says. Hey, Amen. My uncle, he had a nice big church over in Akron, Ohio. He'd have me come over and preach him revival every, once every year. And one time he said to me, he said, I'd like to give you this church. He said, everything, the bus, the building, all the equipment, all the, mu all the music and everything, he said, I want to give it to you. Well, I was pastoring a little church up in Hammond, Indiana. <clears throat> it looked good. It sounded good. But I said, no, I can't do that. I'm right where God wants me. I can't do that. I'd have made a bad mistake by then. Well, it wasn't long after that till his wife passed away. In fact, about just a few months later, his wife passed away. She was sick during those times. And I found out at the funeral, I had to preach her funeral. I found out at the funeral that he was having an affair with one of the Sunday school teacher girls in the church. I'm sure glad I didn't get in that mess. Can you say amen? You see, God knows how. Amen. I said, God knows how. I'm glad I stayed on the straight and narrow. I'm glad, amen, I stayed where God planted me. I'm glad I stayed right where God wanted me to stay. Amen. I don't care how good it looks out there. You know, the devil tried to tempt Jesus and show him all the kingdoms of the world and begin to offer him all these things, you know. Amen. But Jesus put the word on him. He came to fulfill the will of the Father. Amen. He stayed in the race. Hallelujah. Amen. You may never get back. Well, my uncle, eventually, I got him back in church. He told me, he said, I know God forgave me, but he said, I'll never have what I used to have again. He had the gift to lay hands on the sick, see them recover. He could go in a hospital room, raise people up. When the doctor said there's no hope, he had a wonderful deliverance ministry, healing ministry, miracle healing. All those things. He said, but I could never have what I used to have. I said, why not? He said, because when I backslid, I lost. I lost out. He said, I, I believe I'll make it to heaven. I believe God forgave me. But he said, I, I don't think I could ever have what I used to have. So, I'm telling you, folks, you can lose out. Amen? Amen? I said, you can lose out. And some folks never to get it back. I said, some people never get it back. Some people get saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Speak in tongues. Uh, have gifts in their lives and backslide and say there's nothing to it. I'm telling you, that's a dangerous thing, folks. I said, that's a dangerous thing. Amen. That's, like, that's blaspheming. Be careful. Devil come too late to talk me out of mine. What about you? Don't quit. You know, it's all right to think about quitting the race. It's all right to think about it. Anybody here ever thought about quitting? As long as you don't. As long as you know you won't. How's that? That sounds better, doesn't it? Hey, Amen? It's all right to think about quitting on this race. As long as you know that you won't quit. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, 
and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, Jesus endured something. He endured the cross. And along this journey, folks, and along this race, we're going to endure some things, amen. But remember, Jesus went before us, hallelujah. And so the Bible said He endured the cross and despised the shame because there was joy set before Him. He knew where he came from and he knew where he was going and he knew what he would accomplish in this world. And thank God today he had you in mind and me in mind. Hallelujah. Amen. He found joy in fulfilling the will of the Father. Amen. We should also have a sense of joy. I said we should have a sense of joy in our soul. Amen? For what awaits us at the end of this race. Hallelujah. Let me encourage you. Hang in there. I don't know exactly why I'm preaching this message tonight here, but this is what God laid on my heart to share with you. Hang in there. Amen? Don't drop out. You know why? Because we've all, amen, have got a bright future if we'll hang in there. We've got a bright future. You can, you can read about it in the Bible. You can read about heaven. You can uh, read about how beautiful heaven must be. You can read about loved ones that's gone before us and waiting for us to get there. And I was thinking the other day uh, when I was up here and taking the part in uh, Brother Ivan's funeral, and I was thinking, my, all my old brothers are, are dying off, you know. Amen. Before me, they're, getting, they're, getting, they're graduating before me. And then just this week along, a good friend that I used to pastor, amen, uh, I heard that he passed away. Amen. And so, uh, listen, folks, uh, we're all on a journey, and we're all on a race, and we're all going to finish one of these days. But it's, uh, the main thing is that we finish well. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to finish well. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 3 says, Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. Consider it. Stop and consider. If you get discouraged along the way, just stop and consider what Jesus done for you. Consider what He did. Somebody said, oh, but He was Jesus. Yeah, but He came in the flesh. Amen? He, his flesh suffered just like our flesh suffered. Come on. He was tempted just like we're tempted, yet without sin. Amen. He suffered the most cruel death probably that anyone could suffer, considering all the beatings and the mockery and the plucking of the beard and, and the thorn of horn, or the, uh, the, the crown of thorns and things of this nature. Amen. And then having spikes driven into his hands and in his feet. Amen. And hanging on a cross suspended. Amen. In the heavens uh, on, a, on an old rugged cross. Stop and consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against him, lest that you be wearied and faint in your mind. Jesus didn't drop out. Amen. We need to stop and consider the price He paid for our salvation. Man. He endured persecution. He, en he endured accusations. He endured fault finders. He endured mockers. He endured temptations. He endured rejection. He endured uh, the Gethsemane when he prayed until his sweat became a great drops of blood. Amen. He endured the beatings. He endured the cross. Amen. He endured such contradictory things. Amen. Against him. Amen. Uh, yet there was no sin in him. There, amen. They could not really find any fault in him. They were just accusing him and blaming him and mocking him and then they crucified Him. Yes, He was tempted even in the garden of Gethsemane. Father, I would that this cup would pass by me. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. What happens when we lose our desire to keep running the race? You ever lose your desire? 
I have. Time to time. I've lost my desire. So what do we do? What happens when we lose our desire? What happens when we lose our desire to go to church? There are people that do it. What happens when we lose our desire to serve in the church? Pastors have a hard time sometimes getting people to serve, being faithful. Just do it a while and get tired and quit. Come on now. Hey man, what happens when we lose our desire to pray? Do you ever lose your desire to pray? I have. You know what I do? I get myself by the nap of the neck and I push myself down on my knees. I know I have to pray. I said, I know I have to pray. Amen? I know I have to communicate with my Father. Amen? I know I've got to keep the victory in my soul some way, somehow. Hallelujah. What do you do when you lose your desire to read the Bible? Isn't it sad? I can pick up a newspaper or a magazine and read and, you know, get excited reading and pick up the Bible and read and go to sleep. I've got some Bibles that got a lot of wrinkles on some of the pages where my face was laying on it, asleep. Probably don't happen to you. Probably because you don't read it that much. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> Amen? So what happens when we lose that desire? When we lose our desire... Then it becomes duty. Then it becomes have to do it. Got to do it. Amen? Pastor Chris, he, he's probably about the first one out here on church time. If he can be. Probably the last one here. Up. You know why? He has to. He's a pastor. But somebody else should do, take that responsibility for him. And serve. Make sure that all the doors are locked. Make sure all the lights are turned off. Come on. Everything is secure. Hallelujah. So what do you do when you lose your desire? You come to a place in your life where you say, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. Amen. Did you ever go to church and see people laughing, you know, just having a good time in the Holy Ghost, shouting and having a good time, you know? Amen. And, and, and then... Uh, Maybe go back again and everybody's just sitting there. Just sitting there. I remember one time, Sister, we had one of those dead, you know, we call them dead services. And, uh, and of course, every church goes through it from time to time. Even individuals do. Come on. From time to time. Sometimes you've got to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And so what happened? My sister got up and she said, I, she was having a good time and nobody else was. She said, I don't know why you all sitting here like a bump on a log. And the, the orneriness in me, which I didn't know I had at that time, I got up and I said, Sister, next week you'll be the bump on the log. See, because I know how it works. Amen? Sometimes we're the bump on the log. Amen. <clears throat> when we lose our desire, we've got to make ourselves do it. And we must say to ourselves, I've got to make it. I've got to make it. I've got to go to church. I've got to keep on serving. I've got to keep on playing music in the church. I've got to keep on leading. I've got to keep on being a janitor. I've got to keep on doing what God has called me to do. And every child of God has a ministry of some kind. Talking to a pastor Saturday, yesterday, and uh, he's resigning his church. 
because his wife has Alzheimer's. And he says, I've got to take care of her. I said, you're a real man of God. You're a real man of God. I said, whether you know it or not, this probably be the most important part of your all of your ministry. That is a ministry. I said, that's a ministry. Come on. That's a ministry, an important ministry. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but when I get to heaven, amen, I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Enter into the joys of the Lord. I'll make you rule over many. Amen. So, I'm about done. So if you'll come to the music, please. <clears throat> I've got to make it. I've got to keep on running my race. Amen. I'm not doing it. I'm doing it, yes, for me, absolutely for me, but not just for me. Amen? I don't want to fail. I said I don't want to fail, but I want to be a light and an example. Amen? So those who are watching my life will follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. So, I've got to make it. I've got to make it for my companion. I've got to make it for my children. I've got to make it for my grandchildren. You see, if I backslide, it'll have such a devastating effect upon my companion. It'll have a devastating effect upon my children and my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, my great-great-grandchildren. Amen. And not only that, but my friend, I want you to know for day, today, folks, I've got to make it. Amen. I've got to keep on keeping on. I can't afford, amen, to drop out. Amen. When my desire goes down, I've got to go down on my knees. Amen. And I've got to walk by faith and keep trusting in my God who's able to keep me. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me? Amen. I've decided 100% I'm going to follow Jesus. Amen. If you're here tonight, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. The altars are open and you can come down and Ask God to forgive you and come into your life. and He's anxious to do that. The greatest decision anybody ever makes in this world is a decision to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's the greatest decision any man or woman can make. Also, in this message tonight, I don't think I've preached it just about the wind tonight, but I feel in my spirit tonight, some of, somebody's here tonight, who's discouraged. Somebody here tonight kind of losing your desire. Amen? You see, we don't go to church to see and be seen. But we come to church to worship our God. To get refueled, so to say. To be taught the Word of God. Amen? Amen? The Bible says, Neglect not the assembling of ourselves together as some do, seeing the evil days are approaching. But I'm going to tell you, the altars are open. I'm going to ask my pastor here to come stand beside me tonight. Anybody here tonight that needs prayer? We're going to do like the Bible says. We'll, we'll anoint you with oil and lay your hands on, on you and pray for you. God will heal you. That's Bible. You know, a lot of people believe in God. I said, a lot of people believe in God. But how many people believe His Word? He's not a man that He would lie. How many believe that? His Word is alive, it's powerful, it's sharp, and a two-edged sword. Amen? His Word. Just His Word alone can heal you. Amen? Amen. If you're here tonight, you know, I know a lot of times, I know what it's like. I've gripped the back of a pew many times, even since I've been saved. When the Holy Spirit's speaking to me, 
to go forth and have prayer. Go forth and have pastor pray for you. I'll just hold on to the pew and say, well, I think it'll be all right. That's the devil. So I've missed out a lot of times on real blessings. Missed out a lot of times on a touch from God because I failed to listen to that still, small voice. Amen. He that hath ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. He's not talking about these. I say he's not talking about these. And when he speaks, he speaks in a small voice. He doesn't stand there and, and keep badgering you either. He just speaks to you. You need to go on. That's it. Amen. So we're going to wait just a, just a moment. If you need prayer for anything, whatever it might be, feel free to come. We'll pray. But prayer changes things. Amen. We'll grow on, strangely Amen. Amen. in so the light of His glory and grace. Okay. Pastor Flath is going to come. She's going to lay her hands on your eyes. We're going to launch you with all the hands on you. We're going to believe God for your healing touch tonight. Everybody stretch your hand this way. Look for God in the name of Jesus. Lord, I rebuke this pain and the cause of the pain. I command it loose it from her. Loose from her body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I speak healing God into her body right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed in Jesus' name. And don't be surprised when you are. <laughs> God bless you. Raise your hands and thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Come here, Bertie. Jesus, look forward in his wonderful face. Amen. And she's still here. Thank God. But you need to pray about your hip. Legs of earth will grow strangely. Oh, do you? I'm going to pray about that. Amen. I'm going to pray that God will begin to let blood circulation go through these legs fresh and renewed. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for these arteries and these veins. The blood will bring blood life and strength. Yay, God, in Jesus' name. I speak healing God. God heal your body. I speak God to these arteries, these blood veins. God, that they will open up and the blood will flow like a new God. Pray healing God. He will grow strange. Yes, Lord, you see. Hands on the sick. He shall be caught. I thank you. His glory. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you to move my faith a little bit. Raise it, raise it up and down a little bit. Turn Come on, that's right. Amen. Come on. Come on, Lord. Ah, come on, Lord. Well, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That blood is yours. My God in Jesus. Faith. Healing God. Hallelujah. Healing in this blood. And the blood. Jesus. In the light 
of his glory. Our sister stands in the gap. Lord, to make up the head. Stand in front of God. Of her teacher's husband, God. Who fell off the ladder. And broke up some bones. And going through surgeries, God. I pray, Lord, for speedy recovery. For the healing, God. And honor her faith tonight, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, here's your pastor's wife, a big hug. And the things of earth okay. will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. The things of earth will grow strangely in the light of His glory and grace. I think He would too. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, that my sister stands in proxy, Lord, tonight. Stands in the gap and make up the heads, God, for the brother, Lord. God, that you'll bring deliverance, God. And let the mama feel, God. God,
a lot of time ago. I preached too long, but okay, so I'd like to come by and shake your hand tonight. Okay. Tell them how much you love me. Not with just Tom and Dean. I get a tongue, you know, a word. But if you got a little deed, drop it. Christmas is coming. Okay? Well, I started out traveling for the Lord many years ago. I've had a lot of heartache, had a lot of grief and woe. But when I would stumble, then I would humble down. And there I would say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's God in name, all the world, them filth and worldly things. If I could, still wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow. Until the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's God in name, all the world that wants and worldly fame. If I could, I still wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around. Now he's offering everything that's God in name, all the wealth I want and worldly fame. If I could, still would take nothing for my journey now. There's nothing in the world that could ever lose love. Silver and gold could buy a touch from above. When my soul needs healing and I begin to feeling His power, I can say thank the Lord I'd take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I'm gonna make it to heaven somehow. Oh, the devil me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's God in name, all the world, and world and worldly fame. If I could, still wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Oh no, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's God in name, all the world, and fame, and worldly fame. If I couldn't, still I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Oh no, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow, though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around. Oh, he's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want and worldly fame. If I could, I still wouldn't take nothing for my journey now.